welcome back to another video. Today's video is a project I'm very excited about. It's timber management. Last year I had 34 of my 80 acres timbered off and they took poplar trees, maple trees, uh, dead ash trees, something we're dealing with here in Michigan is the emerald ash borer and it pretty much decimated all of our ash trees. But anyway, if you've got property and you're looking to see what it looks like after your property has been timbered off, this video is perfect review for you. It's a video that I wish I would have had a year ago to take a look at after my uh, woods was timbered off to just get an idea what what's this going to look like one year later and it's really truly amazing. Um, stay tuned, uh, you're going to enjoy this video and stay tuned to the end because at the end I'm going to give a few tips on uh, what to do if you're considering having your woods timbered off. Uh, one key tip that you must do uh, before deciding to uh, make the plunge on this and it's very important it's going to save you a lot of trouble so stay tuned. Okay here I am at the west edge of my property and see behind me this is the neighbor's property back there now, this is pretty much my property line and so you can see it's pretty dark back in there heavily wooded pretty heavily wooded uh, not a lot of sunlight hitting the the uh, forest floor um, that's what my woods used to look like a year ago so here we are today and we just do this so let's just start panning the camera around and this is what my woods looks like today As you can see, I got most of my trees got removed. And over here on this side of my property, most of these trees in this area that got cut down, most of the trees that were cut down over here were maple trees. And, and so the maples don't really throw up the shoots like the, uh, the aspen or the poplar do. Um, so it'll probably take a little bit longer before this uh, kind of pops back. Um, we're going to get a lot of uh, just a lot of uh, vegetation basically growing up through here um, for the next few years until some of the seeds start to take off and they have. You, you just got to look close to the ground to find uh, the little baby trees that are popping up and it'll take a few more years for this to grow back up but um, won't be as quick as what uh, happens with the the aspen or the poplar but eventually this will will grow back up as well and will get very thick over the next few years now for for now it's going to be a little sparse especially when the leaves fall so here's an area right here that's got a little bit more of a takeover of the aspen or poplar trees and you can see look at all of them They're popping up everywhere. And so it won't be but another year or two. And this is just going to be really thick right through here. All these little trees are just going to take over uh, down on the ground. And this is just going to become extremely thick. And it's going to be excellent cover for the deer. Um, it's going to give them a great place to hide uh, during the hunting season. And so sneaking in and out of here in a couple years. Uh, it's going to be beneficial. And so the poplar or the aspen are the first ones to take off. And that's the indication, you know, of a, of a newer forest.
So that was pretty cool. Um, just basically walked up on three bucks that were bedding down basically right on the other side of this tree over here. And one of those bucks has an antler that uh, it's kind of deformed. And I've been seeing it on my trail cams a couple times now. And now that thing's just kind of hanging down the side of its face. It's now a big ball of probably blood and everything, you know, from the antler velvet. It's just kind of swinging there on the side of his face. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see uh, as he uh, progresses along what happens to that, if it eventually falls off or, or what happens to it. So I'll kind of keep an eye on him, see what uh, my trail cam pictures. Uh, I've been getting pictures of him right over in this area quite often, so I'm sure I'll be getting more. You know, see what that does over the course of time. So here's another area where uh, had a, this ridge right here had a lot of uh, poplar trees on it. And as you can see, I think I showed you earlier a spot where they maybe weren't growing quite as well, but this this particular ridge right here, they're already, let me get right in here, I mean, they're already, uh, you know, chest high. That's just one year, or not even just one summer. So, as you can imagine, this whole area next year is just going to be thick with uh, with little poplar trees growing up all over the place. And again, it's going to make a great uh, bedding area for the deer to hide in. And, and the other thing I didn't point out before is these uh, poplar shoots or these trees, you know, when they're real young like this, the deer love to eat them. And so this basically turned into a 35 acre food plot uh, this summer when everything started to grow back up. I've had, for me to walk in here like that and see those deer, that is not uncommon. I see deer probably in that exact same spot every time I come into this, uh, this area over here. And they're just in here every single day. And so now the thing is, is well, what happens when hunting season rolls around, is that going to be the case? Well, that'll be yet to be seen, but at least this summer, this place has been holding deer like, uh, like it never has before. I'm going to walk through up this ridge that I was just on. You can see they got a bunch of these, I don't know what they call these things, Muriel or whatever. They put out about 10,000 seeds of plant and they're just a mess and they're hard to kill and get rid of. So I'm not crazy about these things being in here, but oh well, there's nothing I can do about it. Eventually they'll get choked out, hopefully with the trees. But yeah, here's, I can just kind of give you an idea up on this ridge here, more, you know, just poplar trees. Just popping up all over the place. And that's good. That's going to give cover here in about another year or so. This will be pretty good. Well, that's a quick tour of my property after being logged off. Now, one of the things, um, any of you that are thinking about having your property logged off, one tip I'm going to give you is make sure you have a, uh, a forester work with you on this because I mean unless you're you know up on what's going on with timber prices and and all the things that go along with that it's well worth your money to hire a forester to manage your timber sale uh, that's what I did uh, I was very happy with that things that they think of that I never would have known um, they took care of and kept, kept probably saved me a lot of trouble in the end. So I've heard horror stories from a lot of other people that have had their uh, their property lumbered off and sometimes it doesn't work out so well. So uh, one tip is make sure you work with a forester if you want to do this to your property. Um, that's the best thing you'll ever do. It's money well spent and you'll be happy in the end. Um, if you want to know a little bit more about the process and kind of some of the things that I went through in terms of getting my property logged off, go ahead and leave it in comments below. Um, if I see there's some interest in it, I'll go ahead and make a video on that in the future. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.